How many times do you pick up your phone to check on social media? Five times? 12 times? How does this affect your day-to-day -day life? Does it make you less productive or cause loss of concentration? Do you ever think that it could affect your quality of life or simply be there in the background? Bad screen time habits can distract from our concentration, attention, and focus. It can also contribute to us feeling higher levels of stress and being less organized in our day-to-day -day life. A recent survey that was undertaken indicated the most common uses of social media and the favorable response for this question was to be able to stay connected and in touch with family and friends. This survey taken in the northwest of Tasmania from a group of 14 to 18 year olds showed that some of the most main platforms used were Snapchat, Instagram, and YouTube. Most of the reasons for the use of these sites were for the purpose of entertainment to find funny content so they can feel in their free time. In a study from 2018, Rescue Time reported that on average, we spend three hours and 15 minutes a day on our phones. It may not be about how long you are on your phone for a period of time, but how often you pick up your phone. As the study also states, most people spend three minutes on a task before switching to something else. During most of these times, did you check to see if there were any notifications on Instagram or see if you were tagged in a new meme on Facebook? Do you experience that twitch that urges us to reach for our phones, thinking that there might be something for us to check on. This can lead to addiction or anxiety. As the web article trend found from a study that was undertaken, 45% of people feel worried or uncomfortable when email and Facebook are inaccessible. Recently, several people who were average users of social media were interviewed to hear their thoughts about the impact of social media and how we can address the concerns. So on a scale of zero being none and 10 being always, how often do you use social media? I'd say that I use social media about a five or six. Well, I use social media a little bit. Like, I think I was up till about 4 a.m. this morning just sitting on Facebook. Like, it is a part of our life. I reckon I use it often. Always? Um, not always. I would say I use it about seven and a half out of ten. Disadvantages of using social media is that some people can get addicted to it and it can um, rule their world um, in a physical way and an emotional way. People can get too attached to it. Um, and yeah, I think it can also be used as a time wasting tool as well. Um, I think there's a lot of people on the internet, um, a lot of dangerous people that we don't really know, we can't really get to know on social media and you know we never, I mean a lot of, for a lot of us we never fully read the full terms and conditions of what we're accepting so we're quite naive I think about what we're doing. Well you're putting your life on the internet so nothing new there, we've been doing that for years. Um, you got the people like the FBI and the NSA and like the AIS, the Australian Intelligence Service, like that's, that's free data for them to look at, they can know your life. Like, I'm, I'm honestly thinking about walking around in a tinfoil cap. Like, why do I do this? Yeah. Have you ever experienced any of the following negative behaviours, such as trolling, harassment or intimidation, stalking, or loss of data? Uh, I don't think I've personally experienced, like, had too much of a bad experience on the internet. But I certainly know people that have been, like, hacked or had their photos stolen and used for like things that they didn't agree to and been catfished and stuff, yeah. My Facebook account was hacked, which has been a giant pain as it's pretty well stolen, a, it could have stolen a lot of personal information and all that if I didn't catch on to it. I've, that's also caused me to have to delete that account and create a new one for me to stay in contact with friends and that and um, be up to date on events and all that. It is a very serious issue. There are people who have had their entire life savings and everything stolen from them, starting from their account getting hacked on Facebook. Setting boundaries would make a good and positive relationship with others on social media. Um, so yeah, making sure that you're the same person in real life and on social media and um, not um, bullying or um, being Mm -hmm. What do you think are good strategies to avoid the dangers of social media? Uh, I think being aware of what you're doing on social media is a good start. 
and like who you're following and what they're supporting and stuff and just being aware of how much time you're spending on it as well because often we can like forget to realize how much time we're actually on it yeah. don't get it that's a good start also use a vpn so you don't have to wear a tinfoil hat be accountable for yourself and make sure others are accountable for you as well which means not blocking your parents probably well overall i think that you need to consider face-to-face -face interaction because face-to-face -face interaction is still the most powerful and the one that you're getting the most from in fact studies have shown that face-to-face -face interaction builds um, attachment in a better way and that people are missing out and they even have problems with um, the development of social skills if they are mainly uh, interacting without that face-to-face -face interaction. So I would say be wary and just have it as one mode of communication, not the main one. From hearing what they had to say about these issues, it came to address the many different concerns and how we can fix and help them. Two major ones were mental health and staying safe on the internet and social media. Both of these concerns that we should address more as it is always happening and it's about playing it safe not clicking on sites that look dodgy or getting too attached to your life online. Referring back to the survey that was undertaken, the biggest dangers of social media was the problem of addiction, bullying and mental health. However, these downsides and dangers that were brought up in the survey time and time again were overtaken by positives of social media and that it can be great, but it's about how you understand its concepts and keeping yourself safe. Many people thought that these downsides are understandable for everyone and can be helped from either improvement in safety online from the company's terms and conditions or having accountability with others. Do the dangers and negative effects get overrun by the positives and benefits of social media? From the survey, they appear to be so, as even though these dangers exist, it's still something that people enjoy and like to use in their daily routine. So. What can we do to create awareness and help others online with their safety and health? Firstly, mental health. The top number one tip to say to someone if you're worried for them is, are you okay? As that can help you them open up. Also, directing them to the right help, like a counsellor or psychiatrist, or even suggesting a technology or social media fast. As for scams and frauds, we can be more aware by doing more research and changing passwords, or even getting ad blockers and better online protection services. Bullying and harassment may never fade away, but there are always ways we can protect ourselves and build up our own resilience. On most social media platforms, you are able to report accounts if there are examples of bullying to you or to others. So in doing this, you can help make the social media platform aware of any actions they may not be able to fit into the guidelines around safety.